and uh, I think a young John uh, might very well have gone into politics, much more likely than Caroline going into politics, but that was not to be. Did you have um, a relationship with him uh, that was close, with John Jr.? Not close, uh, quite different generations. Uh, we saw each other on occasions. I remember that uh, during the, um, what was it, what, it was probably the 50th anniversary of the United Nations, mm -hmm. and uh, Castro came to New York for it. And uh, I had met Castro earlier, and John called me up and asked if I would arrange uh, for him to interview. Mm -hmm. uh, Castro. Right. Your uh, buddy Castro. No, not my buddy. Well, you had some things in common. I wouldn't say we had A much in common. A point in history. But, well, that's true. Uh, anyway, I did ask uh, Castro, and his answer was, why not? Mm -hmm. And were you in the room for that? No. Um, uh, he's directed me to one of his mm -hmm. traveling aides, uh, who's suggested that both John and I come to a reception that was going to be held at the Cuban mission mm -hmm. later that week. And John, um, first of all, he was pleased and delighted that I had arranged for the interview, but he felt that it would be uh, misunderstood and out of control uh, publicity and pictures if he went to the reception. So instead, uh, I think he followed up. He had his up. mother's head about that, didn't he? About uh, yes. How things uh, would look. Yes. Uh, but at some later point, and I don't know how much later, um, there it, the interview was arranged mm -hmm. in Cuba. Do you subscribe to the theory that there's a Kennedy curse? I certainly do not. I think the uh, They've had Kennedys enormous... have had, uh, yes, curse, bad luck, a family that has given so much to this country, that has served, uh, had so many people serve in, uh, in high position, who've been blessed with good looks and good brains and good uh, personalities. That's not a curse. It's true that because there are so many of them and because they are on the go and because they dare and they risk as restless, ambitious people do, there's bound to be some tragedies and uh, setbacks. But no, it's not a curse. The family that Joe and Rose raised, do, do they stand out remarkably um, in a way that families aren't being raised today? Well, that's... Uh, Let's stop for a moment and pay tribute to Jackie. Imagine trying to raise in that uh, glass house with yeah, everybody fishbowl. in the world, mm -hmm. fishbowl, looking at her and her children at a time when most teenage children were turning to drugs or communes or rebellions against authority. She raised two wonderful Wonderful uh, children. Children, and I think that was her. And not as monks and nuns either. They were, uh, they were out there in the world yeah. in a contemporary so, way. Uh, so uh, let's uh, start there. And then going back, I would say uh, both uh, Joe Kennedy and Rose Kennedy uh, did a marvelous job. Uh, Joe Kennedy interested his children, and particularly his sons, in public service, mm -hmm. including politics. and government, uh, governmental affairs, and Rose uh, was the source of uh, religious uh, instruction for the children. JFK never tired of quoting to me what she never tired of quoting mm -hmm. to them, of those to whom much is given, much, much is. is required. Which uh, isn't all that different from ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do well, for Well, I know country. you don't like to be called a speechwriter. And, uh, I was once a long time ago. I've decided just to call you a collaborator because in, in, in reading... That had another meaning during World War II. Yes, but, it did. Uh, but uh, uh, an, 
Well, a speech collaborator. How's that? A word collaborator, because you, 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 you know, you, you, you say so well that so much of what was said by Kennedy or written for Kennedy, when you read the book, you realize that you two were just in this together all the time, and that I could understand where it would be easy to sometimes miss the line between who contributed what. You always said it was the ideas that matter, not who wrote them. But, Correct. But, but do not who worded them. But you, you did write speeches, and you are a wonderful writer. And uh, do, do you think of yourself as a writer at all? Now that I've published my tenth book, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. You, you don't seem to want to embrace it sometimes. There are many other things you want to be thought of, and you, and you say almost woefully that when the New York Times writes their obituary, they're mm -hmm. going to. They're going to call you a speechwriter, and it's like that's not the way you'd want it to be written. What would you want the first paragraph to say? You mean the uh, the caption? Well, uh, or the first paragraph. The caption. You the <laughs> caption. Uh, the headline will say uh, Theodore C. Sorensen, age 103. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! We like that. Uh, shot by an angry husband. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, it was Kennedy's speechwriter. <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, they will misspell it as they usually do. Yes, yes, yes. It's E N, not uh, O N. <laughs> but uh, uh, speaking of the New York Times, uh, it was just a couple of months ago that uh, that uh, marvelous Q and A uh, mm -hmm. feature yeah, they have that was uh, nice. asked me that very same question. Right. You know, what would I want to be called in that headline if it had to just be a few words? And uh, I said, servant of peace and justice. Well, that's, that is, um, that's a good one. There was, uh, in our last few minutes, I want to read something that you said that I wanted to apply to um, uh, right now. You know, right now in our political campaign, you were, you were talking about JFK's campaign for president. And you said the campaign is not really changed, campaigning has not really changed all that months, much since JFK. Only more expensive and frenetic, but the core requirements address the issues that matter to people, have good ideas, good staff and strategy, and most of all, work harder than the other campaign. You say that worked in 1960. Does that still work today? Yes, where did I say that? You said that somewhere in your somewhere somewhere in the vast out there of all my research. Do you, do you, well do you not agree with yourself? Yes, no, that's um, <laughs> I think that's uh, I think that's exactly right today and I think that's Obama's secret. Is I think that he, what? I think Obama outworked the other candidates. He has the and uh, you know Let's not turn this into an Obama campaign meeting, but, no, uh, but you have the most important quality in a president was the quality JFK had, which is judgment. And Obama has shown marvelous judgment, including opposing the war before it was begun, but also in picking a team. That's the single most important decision a president is going to make mm -hmm. is when he picks his team. Obama picked a campaign team that did not engage in feuds and fights like some of his opponents' teams, that did not engage in the old politics of negativity, that instead focused not on headlines, polls, endorsements, but on delegates. That's what John F. Kennedy did. Mm -hmm. He and I were out there in the 50 states working with people at the grassroots level, mayors and county chairmen and local legislators, and we'd read in the paper that Lyndon had just announced back in Washington that he now had state so-and-so because the senator from that state had just endorsed him. We knew senators didn't pick convention <laughs> delegates, and we were there where the convention delegates were being picked, which is the grassroots. Uh, well, on that note, uh, we're going to end and let you Do sell. I get to ask a question, too? What would you like to ask? Well, if you're finished, I'll, after you're finished, I will. Okay. Ask me a question. Where's the men's room? Oh. <laughs> it's, it's on our way to the book signing, so you're in luck. 
and then and then when you come back uh, in a couple of years for your next book, we'll then finally get to Ich bin ein Berliner or I am a jelly donut. And if you want to know what ah, that wait, means, now I have to. You have to. Last week I was in my home state of Nebraska, right? Signing books, selling books, speaking, mm -hmm. and a woman who is a professor of German chided me for taking the blame in this book for that for that because she said there's no blame at all it is not grammatically incorrect in uh, german mm -hmm. and that not a single person of the two million people spread out there and far as i could see not she's certain not a single one of them thought JFK no. was saying, I'm a jelly donut. <laughs> but, but you're going to have to read the book to find out what that means. Thank you all very much, and thank you, Ted. Thank, thank you. you.